I want to do a video today on number sets and classification of numbers. And so here's sort of a standard diagram that you got. Uh, you got the natural numbers, the whole numbers, integers, rationals, real algebraic numbers, uh, real numbers, including the transcendentals. You got imaginary numbers and you got complex numbers. And so this is a pretty common thing on the internet. I got this from uh, math math equalityfiles.wordpress.com and um, that's not really what I want to get into right now. What I want to talk about is I want to talk about the why. Why do we have all these different sets of numbers? And it really comes down to this concept of closure. And so when you're watching this video I really want you to sort of Forget that you really know what's going on and just kind of uh, just sort of try to be a little bit naive or uh, go way, way, way back in time. Okay, so we start with the naturals. One, two, three, etc., etc. And then I, so then I do two plus three equals five. I do 8 plus 13 equals 21. And I realize that a natural plus natural equals natural. So this set is closed under addition. It's a closed set. If I take two elements of the set and add them together, I get a third element of the set. <clears throat> and I do two times three is six, and I do eight times three is gonna be 104. And so I get natural times natural is equal to natural. So it's closed under multiplication. Okay, great. What more do we need? We can add and we can multiply. Well, how about subtract? How about if we do three minus two is equal to one. So that's closed. A natural minus a natural equals one. But then what happens if I do two minus three? Well, what happens there? If natural numbers are all that I have, if that's all that I know about, I can't do this problem. So we need to invent a number, we need to invent more numbers. Invent or discover, depending on how you want to think about it, new numbers. So in order to do this, I need, I need to have my negatives. and zero. So now I've got dot, 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 negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. And the, these are going to be closed under subtraction. And they have a name. Those are the integers. Okay, so we started with the naturals, but then we got to a point where if we wanted to do a certain problem, if we wanted to do that problem, we need to come up with new numbers. 
And those new numbers that we came up with were integers, which are closed under subtraction. Okay, great. So now the integers are closed under addition, closed under multiplication, <coughs> closed under subtraction. Well, what about division? Okay, so if I've got division of integers, I got 6 over negative 3 gives me negative 2. <coughs> All set. Closed. No, sorry. We're not, we can't just give one example and call it good. So if you look, if I've got um, 7 over 2, what's that? That's not an integer. So integers are not closed under division. Well, so then I need to call these something. I'm going to call these rationals. Great. So now I've gotten, I've went from naturals to integers. Now I've got my rationals and I need my rationals because I need these to be closed under division. So if I go back to here, I got my naturals, they're inside my whole numbers. Didn't really talk about those so much. We got my integers, now we're at my rationals. Well, why do we need the irrationals? Why do we need the real algebraic numbers? Okay, well, let's think about that. So, we can do a certain, a very specific type of multiplication. I want to do specifically a times a equals what? So if I do 4 times 4, I get 16. That's a natural, that's a natural, that's a natural. If I do um, 2, negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4, that's an integer, that's an integer, that's an integer. If I do 1 half times 1 half, I get 1 fourth. That's a rational, that's a rational, that's a rational. Okay, that's fine. So this is closed for rationals. But now, suppose I have this thing where I say, I want to do a times a equals 3. So what's a equal? It's pretty simple. It's just a continuation of this. 4 times 4 is 16. And negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So I just want two numbers. That two numbers that when I multiply them together, I get three. And this is not a rational number. So that is square root of three. That's irrational.
And so that's why we need irrationals. But then suppose I take it another step forward. I'm gonna continue with the same idea. A times A equals negative six, negative six. fine. Negative six is a, is a perfectly wonderful integer. It's just really easy. So I want two numbers that when they multiply together make negative six. So A equals, well, it's not irrational. So it's not, it's not rational, not irrational. These two make up the reals, so it's imaginary. So the square root of negative six is imaginary. And so then I end up, then finally I go to complex, which is a plus bi. So there's a real part, an imaginary part, And these are closed under all algebraic manipulations. So Anything that I do, so in algebra, algebra, I can add these two together. I can add a complex to a complex and I get a complex. I can take a complex number and square it and I get a complex number. I can take the square root of a complex number and I can get a complex number. Anything that I want to do algebraically to a plus bi and some other c plus di, I'm still going to I'm still going to be closed. So the keyword is closed. That Anything I do algebraically to a complex number is going to give me back a complex number. And so that is why we have all of this stuff.